I'm so excited for what I'm about to show you guys. A new way to beat the Sicilian defense. Of course, arising from the old attack called the Baudelaire attack, but with different strategies. Anyway, two days ago, I published a video about my improved Baudelaire attack against the Sicilian defense where you go queen e2 on the third move instead of playing knight c3. The whole idea is that you want to stop pawn to d5 which most of your opponents are going to play by accident or due to lack of patience. And we saw that there are so many tricks and traps that are hidden in this anti-Sicilian attack. So let's see how I destroy my opponents using some nasty traps hidden in my improved Baudelaire attack. And you're going to see that most of my games usually end in less than 15 moves. Let's go. So my first game ended in exactly 7 moves. My opponent was a 2281 rated opponent and I started with e4 he played c5 this is the most common move at advanced level along the way this is what you're going to be dealing with unlike pawn to e5 on the first move i played bishop c4 then my opponent thought this was just a mere bowdler attack so he blitzed out knight to f6 i don't know why but that allows me to go pawn to e5 maybe forcing him to go back but he had another idea to go pawn to d5 saying take my knight and i'll take your bishop so what i did was i first of all gave him a check bishop b5 check and then he blocked with his bishop after which i played pawn to e6 these were my own strategies by the way no stockfish analysis involved whatever stockfish is going to say i don't care because this is what worked against my fellow humans anyway f takes e6 was played and then i played queen h5 check see that black skin cannot escape from sobibo so my opponent played pawn to g6 as the only way to block the check then i played queen e5 intending to capture the pawn and also attacking these which made my opponent to resign for example let's see what would have happened if black played rook g8 i was simply going to take black can't still move his knight Still attacking the rook by the way so if they play rook g7 i was going to take the next pawn and if s6 i can just go ahead and take what's off if they take with the bishop or the queen i can take another free pawn so they have to take with the knight and then i go knight to f3 develop my pawn and play bishop h6 next let's look at my next game with this weird attack my next game was against a 2263 rated opponent and this ended in exactly 8 moves. Yep, with the same Baudelaire attack where I started with e4, my opponent played c5 because that's what they play at the top level. Bishop c4 targeting the weak f7 pawn. This time, my opponent played knight c6 instead of what we saw earlier. What did I say whenever you see knight c6? You don't play queen e2 because black may play knight d4 next. So knight c6 by black goes together with our knight to f3 move. And that's what I played in the game. Pawn to e6 was played. But again, I played the simple queen e2, a very key move in our Baudelaire attack. Because once again, I'm avoiding or preventing the move pawn to d5. Because I would have just taken for free. And that's why my opponent played knight g e7, preparing for pawn to d5 this time. Which is why I played knight c3, over controlling the d5 square with three of my pieces. So g6 was played anyways. What did I tell you in my previous video, guys? There are so many things that you can do. Cast a shot pawn to d3, a4, that is okay. But when we talk of creating initiative in chess, you always want to be the first one to do something. In this case, I simply played pawn to e5 because I wanted to be the first one to enter my opponent's territory and also to prepare for the next trap that you're going to see, you guys. My opponent played bishop g7 and I intentionally played knight e4 because I had a feeling that my opponent was going to take what seemed to be like a free pawn on e5 and that's what happened in the game after which I played knight d6 check and my opponent resigned. This is check and next I'm going to win a free piece. And I did cover this trap in my last Baudelaire attack video. But most people didn't seem to give a damn because they thought these are just cheap tricks that don't work in real games. I totally disagree. If these things don't happen in your games, they do. 
happen in my games anyway. It doesn't even matter even if black takes with a bishop like this. Because once again, I'm going to be up a piece. You just need to be careful not to go knight d6 this time because black will take your free knight. So you want to start with knight x e5. After knight takes, you go knight d6 check, forcing black to play king f8. And that's when you take back. This was my second game with my improved Baudelaire attack. Let's see the next game. The next game ended in exactly 12 moves and I was playing against a 2160 rated opponent. You can see that my rating goes up and down, up and down with this account cause I just don't care. And I only use this account for discovering new traps and tricks. I play useless stuff most of the times just to come up with great content. Just wanted to make a point. E4, C5, Bishop, C4. Then this time, instead of knight to f6 or knight c6, my opponent played pawn to e6. This is the setup you're going to see most of the times, which calls for queen e2 immediately, stopping pawn to d5. Anyway, at this point, I could tell my opponent was already confused because of their next move that they played. Normally, black plays knight c6, after which I go knight f3, stopping knight d4. But my opponent played knight e7. And whenever you see knight e7, for example, or knight to f6, just know that pawn to d5 is the next possibility. So you always want to go knight c3 to stop pawn to d5. And this is when my opponent played knight b c6. And anticipating this, I played knight to f3 again to stop that. Pawn to a6. Remember the plan that I showed you in my Baudelaire attack tutorial video. Whenever you see pawn to a6, just know they want to play pawn to b5 next. So you should immediately stop that with a4. I mean, most of my opponents play rook b8 here, but my opponent played knight g6 in this particular game to free up their bishop. I played pawn to h4. You see, I just want to be the first one to start attacking. By the way, I could have also played pawn to e5, which is okay, or pawn to d3, anything. But speaking of initiative, it's up to you to come up with anything that you think would take your opponent out of their prep. So my opponent played h5, so I forced a weakness and then I played d3. Again, they can't play d5, look at this. So they played bishop e7, you know, putting more pressure on my h4 pawn, but I played e5 as if I didn't see this. Because after all, bishop takes h4 was going to be a sheer waste of time. My idea was to go knight e4. So my opponent just cast it short and then I played knight g5. Now you can see this weakness. You can see this idea. It's hardly easy for black to stop that. I mean, even if they take, I can just take back with either my bishop or even better my pawn. So my opponent played d5. Remember that he really, really wanted to play this move from the start. But I played queen takes h5. And look at this. Black realized that he could have not stopped this upcoming checkmate with his elbow. I mean, the best he could have done was just to donate his knight and let me win the game. Anyway, so this was game number three that ended in exactly 12 moves. My next game ended in exactly 15 moves and I was playing against one Kasparov 06. Oh, okay. This is a fake Kasparov rated 23-11 at the time. I started with e4, then my opponent played c5, playing what every strong player plays. Bishop c4, then e6 once again. You're going to see this setup from time to time. Queen e2, then my 23-11 rated opponent blissed out d5 with both of his eyes closed which I gladly took, by the way. That was just a free pawn. So you can see there's room for error in this beautiful attack. Knight to f6 was played, but I just, you know, took the next pawn and exchanged everything to simplify the game. I didn't even mind, you know, exchanging queens because I'm already up by two pawns, actually. So I wouldn't mind trading off my queen. Bishop e7 was played. I played knight f3. And after knight c6, I played knight g5, you know, intending to do this. By the way, black can't even castle. Queen d6 was played. Now my opponent wants to exchange queens. But I just played queen f7 check. I mean, after this, I castled short. I understand that there are better moves that I could have played. But again, at human level, these are the things that me and my opponent could only see. Knight e5 attacking my queen. I retreated back attacking this. But my opponent blissed out pawn to c4 out of frustration. I took another pawn. So I'm just eating pawns. Queen c7. Then I played queen b5. Knight c6. I played queen takes c4. 
and my opponent resigned right on move 15. Anyway, let's see another game where I played this so-called improved bottler attack. Let's go. This game ended in exactly 17 moves. So I was playing against a 22.89 rated opponent. Look, when you play forcing moves, anyone is prone to error. The more you keep on attacking your opponent, the more you keep on giving them pressure, the more they are likely to blunder and play like a complete beginner. This works like magic. I started with e4, he played c5. As usual, I played bishop c4, d6. So for the first time, we see the modern Sicilian defense, which may transpose into the Najov if I play this normally. But I played queen e2, because what else do I know? My opponent played knight c6, and what did I say? Whenever you see knight c6, you go knight to f3 to stop knight d4. Bishop d7 was played, and I, I just played knight c3, normal stuff. I didn't even know traps were going to occur, not even setting up any dirty traps. Knight f6 was played, d3, again, just some normal stuff, g6 was played. Then I played h4, just a move with some initiative behind, bishop g7 was played. Against this kind of setup, I like playing pawn to h5 because I want to sacrifice my rook and, you know, open up the king side like this. This is approved by Stockfish, by the way. Knight g5 is what I played next, you know, putting more pressure on this. If black foolishly castled short, I was going to play queen takes h5 and probably mate on h7. But that didn't happen. My opponent played pawn to e6, after which I gladly took on h5, threatening to mate in one. So knight e5 was played, stopping this and also attacking my bishop. But hey, I just realized that I could have taken on e6 if I wanted, but I played pawn to f4 because I knew that my opponent wasn't going to take my bishop anyways because of checkmate in one so he played knight g6 to stop the checkmate but i just continued with a5 attacking the knight again i knew that if pawn takes i was going to take with my bishop and take the knight next so he played knight e5 so i just took <laughs> there's nothing he can do i'm going to mate i mean bishop c6 was played i took on f7 with my knight because <laughs> i want to walk away with a discovery and I'm also attacking his queen and the rook. This is a 2289. The more I keep on pressurizing these guys, the more they blunder. And I like this. I like doing this. I want you guys to start doing these things to these guys. I don't like them. Queen f6 was played. I took on e5 with dignity. And that's discovery check, by the way. King f8 was played. Then I played bishop g5 and my opponent resigned. <laughs> completely sacrificing my knight because if queen takes i've got a mate on f7 <laughs> guys do you want to be playing like this check out my courses at www.casperchess.com i do review these kinds of strategies i mean how to come up with these kinds of moves just keep on attacking 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 they are going to blunder trust me people don't listen anyway let's look at the last game that i played Okay, now this one ended in 21 moves. I was playing against a 21-83 rated opponent at the time. So I started with e4, my opponent played c5, because what else? Bishop c4, e6. I told you, this is the setup that you're going to see most of the time. Queen e2, a6. So you can see moves may change, but the plan will still remain the same. I played a4, because I told you a6 goes together with a4 to stop b5. Anyway. My opponent played b6 for some reason. I played knight c3, bishop b7, d3, knight c6. Again, I anticipated this move, so I played knight f3. Knight f6 was played. Then what did I say? Whenever you see knight to f6, given a chance, even though you have other things that you can do, just play pawn to e5. Be the first one to strike on the center, and black will be confused. He played knight g8. And I played bishop g5, even though I could have played knight e4. So I'm not teaching you to memorize one line of move sequence or whatever. I'm giving you many options just to show you that if you play well, almost anything that you do is playable. Bishop e7 was played. And this is when I played knight e4. As if I want to take back like this, my opponent took, which I did, by the way. I could have also played knight d6 check and then take the bishop, the light squad bishop instead of doing this queen c7 and you can see by the way the time that i spent when playing this game which tells you to say i know what i'm doing 
Sometimes I play these things without thinking twice about them. I just blaze out moves because I already know them. I teach you these things on my channel. Knight d6 check, I played. King e7. I took on f7 with my g knight because I'm attacking the rook. Very simple stuff. By the way, I'm not afraid of this because I can just take with my queen. Knight h6 was played. I could have taken the knight. But I don't know why I just took the rook. My opponent took back and then I solidified this. My e5 pawn. Knight d4 was played, attacking my queen. But I just played queen h5, allowing this to happen by the way. Which did and I was prepared for it because I was ready to go king d2 to capture the knight. Or letting black to take and then play check. There was no defense. The only move is king f8 and then I played pawn to f5 with an idea of you know going f6 next just putting more pressure on my opponent for taking and playing this but after e takes f5 I played knight takes b7 do you know why because I saw a mate in two after queen takes b7 and queen d8 checkmate